<laughs> Just speak. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Uh, thank you so much for coming out to the Central Library today. My name is Celia Avila de Santiago, and I'm the senior librarian with the Exploration and Creativity Department. And I'm Kevin Alcuni, also a librarian here in the Exploration and Creativity Department. And we're here to welcome you to this afternoon's LA May program, Taco Day at the Library. So before we begin, we'd like to take a moment to thank the National Endowment for Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you would like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. And for our LA Made program specifically, please visit lapl.org slash LA Made. We'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land, honor their elders past and present, as well as their descendants who are citizens of these nations. For more information on which territory you may reside on, check out native-land.ca. Uh, just a couple of other housekeeping tips before we begin. Uh, please silence your electronic devices so as to not distract our speakers. Uh, take a moment to notice the locations of the emergency exits when they're just in case. Uh, if you parked in the garage underneath the library today, you can get your parking ticket validated at the information desk in the lobby. And parking will only be a dollar as long as you parked after one and leave before five. And please, no eating or drinking in the auditorium unless it's bottled water and the bathrooms are down the hallway. And now for today's amazing program, LA Made presents Taco Day at the Library. The Los Angeles Public Library, in collaboration with Javier Cabral of LA Taco, is proud to present Taco Day at the Library, an afternoon of Taco Talk, as three amazing taqueros discuss the challenges of running a restaurant in today's economy, how to create food that stands out from the crowd, and what the future of tacos might look like in our spine city and beyond. Chef Chuy Cervantes helped open Damien and Detroit in 2020 and has been the chef de cuisine ever since, leading his team to win their first ever Best in Show trophy at Taco Madness 2024. His cooking is inspired by what he craves, but his seafood tlayuda <laughs> is one of the most desired dishes in the arts district, made with queso fresco, thinly shaved zucchini, and blue shrimp. Chef Fatima Juarez was born in Mexico City, raised in Oaxaca, and arrived in Los Angeles in 2016, where she worked with Chef Gilberto Centina of Chef of Chichen Itza and whole box fame. In 2023 to 2024, she and her husband started Comal, which produces masa made from indigenous Mexican corn sourced directly from farmers. Her shop at Mercado La Paloma is com complex, is primed to be a game changer in LA Taco's life. Chef Victor Villa is the owner of Villas Tacos in Highland Park and now also Grand Central Market. He is the only three-time champion of LA Tacos Taco Madness Tournament. From a humble stand on Figueroa Street to one of the only taquerias that is known to have a line to eat. Victor Villa's journey is the stuff of taquero legends. Uh, and today's program will be moderated by Javier Cabral. He is the editor-in-chief of LA Taco, a James Beard award-winning award member-supported publication that covers city news, cultural criticism, investigative journalism, food guides, and all things taco. His writing has been featured in over a dozen publications, including Food and Wine, Lucky Peach, The Washington Post, Bon Appetit, Imbibe, and Razor Cake. Uh, let's give a hand to our guest now. Hello, thank you guys for being here. Hey everyone. Wow, um, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I know uh, how sacred Sunday afternoons are, so I appreciate everyone coming down to uh, beautiful downtown LA to, and to the LA Central Library to hear us, uh, and, you know, nerd out on tacos, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, I mean, a little bit of a biased opinion, but I think it's the best food in the universe, and it's also the official dish of Los Angeles. Um, so, we're here today to celebrate LA's taco life. Uh, if you're not familiar with that term, it was coined by LA Taco, which is an independent publication, member supported, 
um, that I, I am the editor of. It summarizes our street philosophy towards experiencing LA and its vast communities inspired by the dish that unifies everybody in the city. No matter where you are from and how much the city changes, the one constant will always be tacos. And more importantly, the desire to know where to find the best ones for residents and visitors alike. Like I said, you know, you know, and it doesn't matter how much money you make, people still, you know, if, you, if you're having tacos at, at, at night in, in, the middle, in the middle of that, like somewhere in LA, everyone goes there. They, want, they all wanna find like the best tacos. More also, tacos are also the food of immigrants, which have shaped our city uh, and our food culture. Um, you know, uh, LA was started, as we all know, here in downtown LA as Nuestra Señora de la Reina de Los Angeles de Porciuncula, and uh, tacos have been in LA since then, uh, when this was still part of Mexico. Do not let anyone tell you that uh, LA does not have the best tacos in the country. Um, as me and my, and my fine colleagues here will, will, uh, will exemplify and tell you once you try their tacos, which there are tacos after this, taco, uh, taco and agua fresca. Um, but first some history bits, because you know, uh, we all eat tacos and um, we all know how delicious they are, but uh, I don't know if, if, if how, how many of you know the history of tacos. Um, so the top theory on how the name taco came to be was pitched by a professor, Jeffrey L. Pilcher, at the University of Minnesota, who's a published author and writes both academic and uh, just consumer books. Uh, and he suspects that the taco comes from the Mexican silver miners in northern Mexico, which likely first invented the word because that was how they used to refer to dynamite. Back then, uh, dynamite was wrapped with gunpowder and a paper. So a taco, which was mobile um, and portable, uh, looked like a, like a taco, like a dynamite stick. So whenever the miners in northern Mexico would, uh, would uh, um, you know, explode rock or you know, mines to looking for silver, they would yell out taco. And now it's because you're a lot of tacos. But I have a new theory that I'm actually unveiling here for the first time um, that I bounce around with some of my mentors and they actually think is viable too. So this theory by Pilcher was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it's an 18th century, um, post, way post colonization. However, uh, I was just in Basque country in San Sebastian and I was, I am almost passed out when I saw a street vendor, a taquero there or taqueras doing there with these items that look like tacos and they call them talos. And instead of, Nixon, uh, instead of Nixonalizing corn, uh, they just blended the uh, corn powder with hot water, which made it chewy and mochi like but it wasn't Nixonalized. And they were putting a piece of chorizo on there. And these tacos, these talos go back to 1520, which is approximately one year after the Spanish came to Mexico. So this is a, another theory that I'm putting out there today. And I'm calling it the talo theory. That, and uh, yeah, who knows? But now the questions. Um, so we'll go one by one. We'll start with Fatima. A taco is a personal dish, right? It's, it's, you know, we all love tacos, we have memories, we all probably cried over tacos. What, uh, we all grew up eating different ones as the baseline. What is a taco for you? The taco is very important for me, hi. Um, <laughs> sorry. Is it, is it in español también, so yeah. I can translate. Um, I practice my English, so um, my name is Fatima, thank you for coming, thank you for inviting. But the taco for me is very important because I'm from, um, Mexico City and, and Oaxaca, and the taco is the is the uh, the plate the best plate for 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 Mexico. Um, el plato el taco para mí es todo lo que implica mi familia, eh, porque de ahí viene eh, la importancia y el cual a mí pues yo soy muy taquera, soy muy garnachera. Uh, Garnachera in the Mexico City is a term <laughs> used to describe anything when you're walking around there and you smell all like the, the tortillas and the things that are fried in oil. Yeah. Garnachas, it's a very, it's a street food. And, um, it's a taco is part of a garnacha term. And this is the best dish because my mom, I, I remember when I was four, five, seven years old, in the mornings is vamos por los tacos de canasta, tacos de carnitas al vapor, healthy carnitas tacos because it's al vapor. But it's, it's uh, very important for me because I remember my, my grandma, my family. This is, this is the, I love the tacos, I love the garnachas, and it's, the, it's all of it for, for my culture, for Mexico. So uh, a, taco al vapor, a, a taco de canasta and a taco de, and a taco de canitas, but a healthy one. Yes. Which, okay. uh, you know, there's, <laughs> some, there's actually a book out there called like the Taco Diet and uh, talks about how people have lost weight eating just tacos. Because if you think about it, the taco is the perfect food. 
if you only eat tacos, um, you know, I mean, of course, in a in a moderated amount, um, it's it's not that it's not as bad as other staple foods out there. Now, Vic, um, you know, what is that taco to you? Like, you know, when you when you're thinking about just nostalgia and just like, what's the first taco? Like, what it, what it, when, when when you think of a taco, what's taco to you? When I think of a taco, I think of like good memories. I think of comfort. I think of a great time and. You know, I've never eaten a taco, and I was sad. Like a, ta a taco brings happiness, and it brings joy, and it brings it brings love. It brings communities together. So there's different types of, of tacos, and it's, it's 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 nice when you get some visitors coming and you show them your favorite your uh, your favorite puesto or or taqueria. It's uh, it, it's such a beautiful thing, and it's so simple, or it could be complex. Um, but there's, there's so much different, uh, to me, it's like memories, uh, in a taco. It brings the best memories that I have. And, um, I, I love being a taquero. I love sharing my food with the world. Uh, like you were talking about a diet. I actually have an employee. His name is Chris. He didn't always start off as an employee. He was, uh, I played football with him in high school, but, uh, I opened up. And he would come visit me, and then he would come every single day. There was a while Chris didn't miss not one like pop-up, um, and then he would he would tell me too like Vic, you're my good friend, and I really love you. But if your tacos weren't that good, I wouldn't be coming. Um, and you you could ask Chris. He he did a taco challenge where he ate our tacos for 40 days, and he's so passionate about our food. Uh, he'll he'll tell any person on the street. Oh, you gotta try this. He's like one of the most passionate people that I've met about our food, more than me probably, and I'm kind of out there too. But um, it's it's something that, that just brings people together. And Chris is like, if you talk to him, you feel the love that he has in his heart and that he has for our tacos. And he loves tacos. Like <laughs> he he takes pride in telling everyone that he's tried tacos over here and over there. But yeah. what is that taco to you? Like, what, like when you were young, like what's like the first taco that you kind of comes to? Like, what chorizo, my, asada, well, my grandma's taco. And what, and what, and what uh, was in it? So like simple stuff. They they vary. Guisados, know? just like uh, home home style stuff. Yeah, like our frijol con um, nopales taco. That's a taco that I grew up eating at my grandma's house. So my grandma played a very special role in the way I look at food and the way we prepare our food. The, the love that I have from for tacos, I think did come from my grandma's house. The smell of tortillas in the morning and guisados, different guisados, carne asada, or when she would cook chicken, the way we do today. So it's, wow. it's, it's a special, you have a very, special moment. You have a very special salsa that I know that has been passed down for a long time. You want to talk about that salsa? Yeah. We have a salsa. We call it Hikil Salsa. It's a, it's a salsa that play, pays homage to our hometown in Hikil, Palm, Michoacan. That's where we're from. Uh, my grandpa was the one who made that salsa. And he showed my dad, and my dad's the one who showed me that salsa. And, you know, I'll eventually show my children that salsa. So it's a salsa that has been passed down. It started off in Michoacan, but it made its way to L.A. Well, so. gracias. Thank you, Vic. Thank you. Chewy, what do you, what's the taco to you, man? Um, I think for me, both Fatima and, and Victor touched on how f familial, um, I guess, Mexican food in general, but I think the taco being kind of the centric part of Mexican food because it covers a lot of the bases that are super important to Mexican cuisine, uh, starting with the tortilla. So oftentimes, for me, the taco started more so as something that I would make myself rather than a taco that was prepared for me because the tortillas are always on the table no matter what's surrounding it, whether it's beans, queso, um, in my case, carnitas. Um, I grew up going to to uh, my, my Tio Alejandro's Puesto in, in Leon, Guanajuato. And he had a birria, uh, birria spot. And I think maybe this happens to a lot of us when we were younger. I think the, f the flavor of, of goat or lamb, a little bit too strong. Um, now I love birria. I, I absolutely adore it. But I think back in the day, it was a little bit harder for me to eat. And uh, my Tio would always, whenever he knew we were in town, he would always get a small pig. And, and put together carnitas for us because he knew that his 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 nieces and nephews would kind of push away the, the birria. So he would always just make us plates of carnitas, and then from there we would take the tortillas and, and make taquitos from that. Um, so for me, 
you know, the, the first kind of flavor that I understood was, you know, that fatty pork combined with the nixtamal tortilla and lime and, and cebolla. And that kind of all together is to me what a taco is. Um, centric to the tortilla, whatever you want to put on it. But for me, it was taco de carnitas for sure. Now, you know, you've worked with one of the most revered chefs in Mexico. Um, you know, Chuy uh, is very rare to have a chef uh, that has stayed in the same restaurant for as long as you have uh, since you opened it. Um, you know, if, if anyone doesn't know, uh, Enrico Alvera is probably the most prolific chef in Mexico. I don't know how many restaurants he has now in Mexico. Dozens or I don't know. Um, yeah, many. Uh, I think we have now um, six in Mexico. Six in Mexico. Oh, okay. And four here in the United States. So, oh, wow. And, and uh, you know, authenticity is a topic that we all over fetishize, especially as, you know, food media or just someone who, the taco is always pinned against, you know, this nostalgic memory that we all have, right? Whether it's with our tios, abuelas, uncles, or mom, or dad, or, your, or yourself. Um, so how do you, you know, you're from El Paso, which is Texas, mm -hmm. which is its own category of tacos, you know, Tex-Mex, everything. Uh, there's even like a, you know, like a, a brand called Old El Paso, right? So do you feel that, like, how, do you feel that you constantly are still trying to learn? Like, what is your thought process when you add a new taco or a taco-inspired dish to your menu? Uh, to yeah, the menu I mean, for me, 100%, I think um, being a cook, learning is at the kind of forefront of everything that I do. Um, paying respect to tradition, for sure. Um, especially for me, being from El Paso, Texas, my parents came from Mexico, and I have a ton of respect for you know, one, obviously Mexican culture, but my parents and how hard they had to work to, to get to this point and get me to this point. So for me, it's a huge thing to really do my research, to taste, to hopefully travel if I get the opportunity, if I'm working on certain ideas. And 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 really from there, um, keep things classic. I love classics. I don't like to really, um, excuse my language, but fuck around too much mm -hmm. when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, I am American and I'm very well aware of that, but all of my upbringing and all of my culture and everything that I know is Mexican. Um, so for me, my American-ness um, really wants me to be super respectful of everything that comes from Mexico, be it the ingredients, be it the recipes that I learn, be it the people that I work with, um, because that's where I'm learning from. I'm not coming up with this stuff in my head. I'm doing a ton of research and for me, it's just always uh, finding the best ways to express that um, while being, you know, respectful. I'm, if any of you have ever dined at Damian or at Detroit, I don't think there's anything that's new or mind-blowing or anything like that, but hopefully it's just well done and tasteful. Um, and hopefully you can see that there is, you know, research and respect there. I think that that's at the forefront for me, definitely. Awesome. Um, Vic, you know, you're the champion. You're the only three-time champion of LA Taco. Your taco only exists in LA. You're, you know, what do you say to people that say, that try to bring you down? Some of you may have seen or heard, you know, this week we're on the heels of a, what some people are calling a taco civil war uh, here, here in LA. Uh, Vic was dragged into it by his, um, someone who was trying to like drag him down to hell. Um, I, I spoke up, but it was, I saw even someone made a meme that was like, you know, like that Facebook, like, you know, mock yourself safe. Someone said, mock yourself safe from LA Taco Wars. Uh, it's, pa you know, we're all passionate here. You all kill, you, both, you three kill each other every day to, to vent tacos, to make all of us happy with the tacos. But like Vic, like a taco, your taco represents Highland Park, Northeast LA. Like I'm a big supporter. I'm a believer that like history, you know, we're all witnessing history in our daily lives. And, and the evolution of tacos. Your taco is the evolution of a taco. Um, what would you have to say to people that try to bring you down or try or that it's not authentic? You know, your tacos, yeah, you know, if y'all don't follow Villas tacos on Instagram, um, you know, he has lines. He's, he's one of the few taqueros of every, in, in LA that has lines almost every day. What would you have to say, Vic? Well, I mean, to, to that situation, those people, you know, it comes with the territory. Um, I just focus on how I could be better, better, today than I was yesterday, better tomorrow than I am today. Um, I share that with myself, I share that with my team every day. So people are always gonna try to knock you down. Um, when I was younger, so I grew up in LA, like this is my home. This is where I call home, I can name almost every street. I know how to, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, but I grew up throwing parties and you know, I would, 
attract haters, quote unquote, because they were they were pretty cool. Then I switched the energy to to opening my own business and starting VS Back Force. Um, and the way that I did it is all the nostalgic memories of the best memories I had with you know the asada at the park on Easter or my grandma's freshly made tortillas in the morning uh, to my dad's salsa, you know, the one that we spoke about, uh, our parties that we would get together. And, and I also want to do something that was a little different. Um, like my man says, you know, pay respect to, to everything that comes from Mexico. The taco came from Mexico. Um, and I'm using, you know, I decided to throw a little bit of cotija. You know, maybe I was walking with the cotija and it slipped and it, it ended up on my taco. And pe people flipped out on that. When you do that, it's like, oh, what are you doing? That's not a taco. You know, first time my tío uh, Joaquin tried our food or saw our food, he's like, that's not a taco, cabron. That's what he told me. <laughs> and now he doesn't stop talking about it to all his, uh, his golfer friends. And I know... Uh, he, he continues talking about it because they continue coming. I see there's like some golfers coming. Oh, you still hugging. So um, the haters, they, they're always going to come. You know, uh, I just focus on myself. I focus on the people that come and eat our food. You know, people line up for our food like crazy for our food. And it's such a blessing. So I focus on that. I focus on the positivity and the people that are coming to visit our restaurant, the people that say they love our food, it's like, it's not an online poll that we won three years. Like, we've, we've done so much more than that. And I think my favorite thing is being the people's favorite taco or one of their favorite tacos. Um, and, I, and on the Michelin Guide, you know? That's the thing, it's like. And, 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 and that, all that's cool. Like, that's cool to be on the Michelin, like LA Times 101 list, all that stuff is cool. but. What I think is even better is the people that actually come, wait, and like sometimes people come one day and they're back the next day, and that happens pretty often. Like now for your taco, like you know, so uh, you know our director of partnerships at LA Taco Memo wrote a full feature on you. He called it uh, in his in his words the seven layer taco. So you said that you maybe you tripped into an, an atypical idea, but like can you talk about like how you came up with your you know, your viral taco, your monstrosity of a taco that just gets people so hyped up and so. Uh, the so best way to put it is like, if I were to be, I, I kind of trapped myself in my own mind, but my mind was a, a Mexican market, a carniceria with every cut, um, uh, you know, every, it, every nixtamal right there, like every, every color of corn, every variety of cheese and, I came up with this with this taco that was a little different. It's not too different, but it is different. When you see it, it you put a hundred tacos next to each other, and probably the one that stands out, and you could like, you could tell where that one came from is is, is our taco. So I just I trapped myself in my mind that our guacamole had to be done with freshly squeezed lime juice. Uh, you know, everything had to be done the right way. So I focus on every aspect of it. I think we have one of the best corn uh, for our blue corn tortillas. I think we have one of the best cuts for our carne asada. Uh, just bring the best individual ingredient together for a symphony of flavors that El Tragón named the seven layer taco of your dreams. And uh, when he did that, we were in the backyard of my grandma's house. Uh, but before that, we would push the grill to the corner. And you know, we, we, we started off really from the bottom. I, it was such a struggle. I remember. I to, remember. to be where we to are get all today. New York. Yeah, couldn't remember right there and there. And, um, you know, that's hard. Um, a lot of people, they don't overcome that. But I always knew, as long as there's some people coming and they're raving about our food, then just, I'm going to keep on going. And that's the beautiful thing about tacos <coughs> in LA. I think that, you know, there's taco for every occasion in life. The good thing, like the beautiful thing is that we're, County of 10 million people, and like you know, it's all set up the, the, the sun shines for everyone. And there's people, there's a time and place for big tacos, and there's a time and place for chewy taco. Um, you know, the point, the most important thing that I try to tell people is like, chill out, dude. It's just food. <laughs> the best food. That's I why know, they get but so like passionate. People, you know, we take ourselves so damn seriously here in LA, where everyone's trying to make it. You know, everyone when they they meet you, they size you up, right? That's the very LA thing. But like, you know, like, yeah, it's just food. Who's to say that like 100 years from now in the, in the panel, 
when the Mark Tape Reform is still standing here, uh, you know, like in a couple of generations, and they're, and they're going to be talking about Vic's Taco as a foundational taco of the LA evolution of a Northeast LA taco, of a Highland Park taco. Like that stuff is that that stuff is a very real possibility. Um, now, Fatima, you know, I'm, I was so excited that you said yes to my panel. Um, Fatima is a new mom. She just had her her uh, kid like a, five weeks ago. I was very, I was very um, nervous to ask you because I, you know, but thank you so much for being here. You really are, I would say, the future of tacos in LA. Fatima worked with Chewy at Damian. Fatima has worked with, uh, with Gilberto Cetina of Holbush, which won LA Times Restaurant of the Year. You know, she's cut her teeth in like, LA's best institutions for tacos. And uh, frankly, sin maíz no hay país. Without corn, there's no Mexico. Without corn, there's no taco. Corn is more important than the taco itself sometimes, if you're talking about it politically and flavor texture-wise. Now, can you all believe that uh, LA has no modern Molino? Uh, you know, we all have Molinos, like, and when I say Molino, I mean like a tortilleria. A tor there's so many tortillerias all over East LA, Boyle Heights, West LA, Cypress Park. You know, there's, there's all over, you know, and these are all places that make nix mal, but yeah, in Mexico City, you know, there's uh, one, another, another restaurant that Enrique Olvera has, is like a neighborhood Molino called Molino El Pujol, and it's, you know, making nice tortillas and nice masa with heirloom corn, with native corn, grown by indigenous communities, and, the, and all this corn is just wild tasting. It's like wine in your mouth, but it's in, 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 in tortilla form. And even New York has freaking neighborhood Molinos, like modern Molinos, and how did LA never have them? Fatima is about to open her restaurant, uh, her Molino, uh, at, next to Gilberto in, in Holbush, and, and it's called Comal LA. Um, and she really is a future and holds a secret to, to the next wave of taco, of taco literacy in LA. Um, but like how, ¿por qué crees que no han abierto, que, que no abierto aquí un, un, un Molino todavía? Like, and how, how, why do you think it took so long for you to, I mean, for anyone to open up? And um, because... For example, in Mexico, uh, specifically in Mexico City, we the people we eat in um, the yellow, uh, the white corn, and blue corn, and that's it. And the other state of Mexico, we have a lot of diversity for corns, a lot of colors, a lot of flavors. Um, and here in LA, I think uh, the people uh, know, no sabe, I don't know. Know. The, yeah. uh, the people know what is the diversity from Mexico for the ex 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 specifically for the corn, because the corn is the base for the the Mexican food. This is the base, and um, I don't know exactly why is the reason, because I I think is uh, because we don't see more like just different corns, uh, three colors, because in, in Detroit, um, they use the blue corn, white corn, uh, yellow corn. And here in LA, uh, is, is no more colors like this. And the people, when the people saw the tortilla, the different colors, they told me, what is the color or, or what color you, do you put is nature color, is, um, is healthy for us, and the people know, knows what is important, uh, what is the uh, biodiversity in Mexico. And this is the reason because um, my uh, partner, my husband, Conrad and me, we opened this project uh, because the, the people need, we need uh, see the diversity for different flavors, different forms, different um, races, diversity, and the, the corn. And we use the corn for tacos, we use the corn for uh, gorditas, we use the corn from, I am use the corn from desserts. And specifically, the uh, uh, tuxpeño is the uh, red corn, and is the flavor is total different. Do you saw the masa, the final product, and the smell is like a chocolate. And this is very important. This is um, all culture from Mexico. And the people need this information. The people need knows where is the flavor. Uh, the people knows where uh, 
um, necesitamos saber de dónde viene nuestra comida, eh, de dónde viene toda esta diversidad de maíces. Um, I'll translate uh, Fatima in the last part, said that we, it, we need to know where our food comes from, where corn comes from. You can only talk about corn uh, so, so much before it gets political real quick. Um, because it's such a, it's a grain that, what, it has like choose your adventure. It has like, you know, beautiful corn tortillas. It has uh, ethanol for our cars. It has like feed for feedlots and cows and animals. Um, and, you know, I have such deep admiration for all three people who are in front of me because you all spend so much time sourcing um, re really the best corn. And no one talks about uh, that a taco is 50% ta tortilla. Uh, este, Chuy uses uh, heirloom corn from um, all over Mexico or Oaxaca, right, different colors. Um, uh, Vic uses uh, Kernel of Truth Organics, uh, and he's been loyal to them. And Kernel of Truth is doing really incredible work. They're super low key, but they actually use American grown organic corn, which there's philosophies. Some people think that we should only eat the corn of where, you know, the land that, we're, that, we're, that we live in, that we take in, and, and, the, and, the, and there's another school of, of, of thought with that too. But, um, you know, I do want to touch on also like, you know, there's, there's Mexican food, tacos in particular, have a double standard um, that like a lot of us even Mexican, even, you know, chefs, even, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, we, because we are, there was a time when LA had like dollar tacos everywhere. I'm sure some of you remember this. Taco Tuesday, people still expect dollar tacos. So, you know, and, it, and we are living through like a tough time economy wise. So um, the tortillas that they're all, the, all these tortillas that, that they're sourcing, um, it's all, it's not, it's not as cheap as the commodity raised, commodity raised, uh, commodity grown uh, heirloom, I'm sorry, uh, GMO corn that a lot of us, that like became the norm with these tortillas that taste like roof shingles and smell like a burnt, like a rubber, like burnt rubber. Um, so uh, is there such a thing as a too expensive taco? And how do you, how do you deal with people who say that your taco is too expensive? We'll start off with Chewy, since this is a conversation for you, and but also I'm sure I've seen, I'm sure Vic gets this kind of comments too. Um, a taco can get too expensive, I think. Um, the context matters a lot. Uh, a taco in certain restaurants might be considered more so a dish rather than just simply a taco. And the vessel that you're using is the plate with the tortilla underneath. Um, and it could play a part in a menu, play a part in whatever the, the, the part of the meal it is. Um, but more so when we're talking about tacos available to us in a more kind of street format or in a more humble kind of restaurant format, I think we do need to make sure that our limit is is honesty. Um, your limit needs to be, if you're wanting to bring in the best ingredients, like we all bring in the best corn, using good product, good proteins, good vegetables for our salsas, um, then it's our responsibility to simply be honest with what the cost is. Um, for instance, at Detroit, uh, our tacos are a little bit of a higher price point, we're looking at, you know, eight to $10 for a taco, depending on which one you're getting. Some are a little bit bigger in size. Um, but the one thing that I will guarantee you is you're going to leave satisfied, you're going to leave full, and you're going to know that the flavor that you're intaking is, is coming from really good quality. Um, where I say that it can get too expensive, I think that there might be some, some things that are a little bit unnecessary in the taco world. Um, maybe some form of kind of more, mm, say we're irresponsibly choosing a really expensive rent for a taqueria, then we're all of a sudden charging our, our customers something that's a little bit too costly when that was our choice to do that. Um, and that maybe doesn't make so much sense. But if that's what it is, and that's what it is, I think it for, for, for the most part, I think it comes to, to being honest. I think we need to move into a direction where the taco is more than just the taco, and the world sees the tacos as something that should be one thing from the street and as cheap as possible, and rather the taco be a realm of cuisine that is large, vast, has many different opportunities, many different opportunities for using different kinds of ingredients. And if your opportunity is to use something more humble and cheaper and your price can stay that way, then more power to you. 
but if you do have um, you know higher overhead, you do have reasons for your taco to be more expensive, then it, it needs to be more expensive. And like I said, I think for us, it's, it's a matter of being transparent and honest, for sure. Thank you, Chair. Vic, how do you deal with, uh, you know? Like uh, we said about being transparent, um, we're transparent about what we use. We use kernel true. We use a certain type of cheese that we haven't really uh, steered from because it re remains the best cheese that, I, that I've tried. Um, so we use that one. Um, quality is our is our top concern. Uh, so sometimes it's gonna it's gonna be a little more pricey than than a street stand because you know I was uh, a taquero that was on the street, and when I did that, I didn't have the overhead that I have now. So that's another thing that people don't really realize. You could go right there and eat a taco. It'll be three bucks, but now you have a restaurant. It's gonna be three fifty. Um, but I think uh, the taco isn't necessarily looked at the same as other cuisines, which, which is wrong because it's, 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 it's an amazing dish and it has different faces. You know, like your tacos are amazing, dude. They look, they look beautiful, they taste amazing, and they're worth every penny. Um, I think there should be more respect towards, uh, towards like the pricing of a taco and it shouldn't necessarily be looked at as uh, something that's less than. Uh, but we're transparent. We, we price our tacos. Uh, we honestly don't really have too high of a profit margin, but we try to sell as many as we can. So it's like bringing in the best ingredients, still being relatively cheap, and uh, just, you know, I, I pray to God that he brings me customers and and that I sell a lot of tacos. That way, even though I'm not making that much in a taco, I sell a lot and, you know, we could be profitable. Thank you, Vic. Um, now, Fatima, Fatima, she's, you know, she, her, for her, for Comale Le, you know, she's going to depend on, on restaurants and taqueros to believe in her product and to understand that, like, yeah, you're not, you, you're used to paying, like, I mean, how much is a cheap tortilla? Well, like, two cents or something, five cents, ten cents per tortilla for, like, this, commodity stuff, commodity grown corn, the roof shingles, the roof shingle burnt, burnt, burnt rubber stuff. Um, now, if y'all want to try uh, right now uh, her tostadas, one of the first chefs to believe in Fatima was uh, Gilberto Cetina. Now, when you're, uh, LA's, LA's top food is tacos, but one thing that no one else realizes is that it's also, we're also the best city in the country for mariscos, for Mexican regional seafood. If you're driving around during the day and you just see all these seafood trucks. Now, at Holbush, they also do seafood. Um, fin to, like, fin to, fin to, Fin, yeah, like, a, like whole fin, they call it, or whole fish. And she, he uses a tostada, raspada, that Fatima uses. Um, pero how, how are you planning on dealing with that, uh, Fatima? O sea, la educación, ¿cómo vas a educar a chefs y a taqueros a, que, a, a apoyar tu producto, uh, to buy your product? Um, um, it's because um, the people know what is all the process. Um, when we start this project, we worked right now with Tamoa and uh, Traspatio Maya, is uh, these two companies from Mexico. Um, we work next to the farmers. Uh, we work next to the families for the jefes and jefas de familia. In Mexico, we support this um, work for, for them uh, because it's very important. Uh, I think uh, right now, in Mexico, uh, we we need the support. We need the the people support this uh, maíz criollo uh, because it's very important. Wh when one race of maíz criollo die, uh, mueren muchas cadenas alimenticias. Uh, so what she's saying, when when one corn, uh, when one heirloom corn, you know, that has been saved, the seeds have been saved. From generation to, to, to generation dies out, uh, a whole uh, like uh, animal, uh, like an animal structure, or like a how would you say the comoda alimenticia, that's right, dies out. Like a generation of like of animals that depend on this, or people that depend on this, also dies out. Yeah, and um, this is important for this is a principal um, thing for for this project, support for the families and people. From Mexico, um, 
the people uh, don't pay good money for this corn, for this uh, uh, criollo uh, corn, and uh, because the people don't have the this information, is a lot of process. When when do you saw the taco? Do you saw the different uh, flavors and forms for the masa? But do you know where is uh, the process? Uh, do you know where is uh, how many people is behind this project, th this product? And this is very important. Uh, it's very important because right now uh, uh, is a lot of um, corns with GMO, and is 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 bad for for all of us. The people no, eh, no sabe qué es lo que comemos. And this is important. And Comal support these families. We work with these two companies from Mexico. Uh, we work with the Chile too for the families. Um, we pay good for the families because it's very important. Because I, I'm, I'm saying this is in, in, in Spanish, sorry. Um, the people, uh, la, los hijos de los farmers, they going to Canada and here for la pizca, and porque en México no les pagan bien por el país, por el maíz, um, y es lamentable porque esto se pasa de generación en generación, los maíces criollos. Los maíces criollos están perdiendo en México porque ya no hay hijos que quieran trabajar el suelo, porque no se les paga justo, porque no se les paga lo suficiente. Y necesitamos, eh, we need support these families, we need this corn, this, or, uh, this criollo corn for the taco. And this is very important in, in, in Comal, is the all biodiversity. We have in Mexico um, 69 races and a lot of, uh, Variedades de maíces. Um, we, uh, Comal, right now, we work with uh, 15, 17 races from Mexico uh, Yucatán, State of Mexico, Oaxaca, Tlaxcala, Veracruz, um, and more. And this is very important. Uh, the communication for the people uh, eat the taco, eat the uh, the tela, the tlayuda. And this is uh, the communication, the Comal 2 for the old people. Wow, so she was saying that uh, there's, uh, in Mexico where there's 69 different strains of corn right now uh, documented, um, and at Comal, which when is it gonna open, just to, um, I mean, if everything was well? Yeah, w we open uh, the last week of August, and is a Molino Tortillería, um, and the same, we use this product for own um, food, and we use these all different corns, and yeah. Well, so, so she was saying that like, uh, right now in Mexico, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, children or, 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 you know, newer generations that are there aren't continuing the traditions of, uh, you know, raising, of, of growing these heirloom varieties that have been saved, uh, that the corn seeds have been saved from generation to generation because the because we all got used to paying such cheap prices for it. And um, it's really unfortunate because uh, as we all know, bio, uh, you know, the health of this planet and ourselves and everything, the secret really is like biodiversity and keeping everything diverse. So that's her mission at Comal when she opens at Mercado La Paloma Complex uh, at the end, the end of August is to bring some of that conversation, narrative and honesty and traditions. Uh, she's working with 17 varieties uh, right now and she hopes to work from, with more. There's a lot of parallels in this conversation with uh, other industries that we all probably love. Um, agave, mezcal, same, same difference. Um, you know, a lot of us want really cheap mezcal um, and you know, this all trickles down to these indigenous communities um, that you know, a lot of them are very, living in very poverty conditions. So, yeah, get rid of the double standard that we all have in our heads, um, you know, because we all, uh, we all uh, go to like Italian restaurants or like Japanese restaurants or makasas or whatever, and we don't really ask about, we don't really think, oh, that's it's like a hundred bucks, right? 
with, you know, I think that same tradition, that same, I call them date night tacos. Uh, let's go have a date night and, you know, spend some, you know, invest in, 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 this, in the evolution of the taco, which we all three of, we're, we're, have, we have, we're blessed with being, we're blessed with having these three individuals that are continuing that conversation. And thank you so much. Um, now, the last question, uh, let's, see, let's, let's end it on an easy, nice note. Aside from your tacos in LA, what is your favorite taco? Okay, that you can eat, that, yeah, in LA that you can go eat. And, and you can't repeat the answer, so. My favorite taco your, in LA. Your favorite taco in LA. Oh, yeah, I have a one. It's in the Jefferson on the South Central. <coughs> the, the tacos, I don't remember exactly the name, but it's in the Jefferson and Central is a, the taco de pastor. Nunca había probado unos tacos como de pastor, eh, de pastor como, como estos en, en Los Ángeles. So, uh, they from Oaxaca, but they have a lot of different tacos, but the taco, this taco al pastor is exactly when I remember my Mexico City. Yes. Yeah, so, is so Jefferson what? Huh? Jefferson, ¿y cuál es la calle? Uh, Jefferson and... <coughs> I don't remember uh, what is exactly the location. Is well, okay, the uh, Jefferson next to, uh, es casi llegando a la central, two blocks. So like before. Central and Jefferson. But don't worry, I'll ask her and I'll do a full story yeah. on LA Taco so y'all can get all the details. Yeah, it's in the corner. It's next to uh, one uh, uh, high school. But oh my God. It's Son Mijes? Yes. Okay, so LA Taco has covered this. Uh, Mijes Tacos. Mijes Tacos. So, the, uh, uh, so there's a phenomenon here in LA very unique phenomenon of a, a very small indigenous group in Oaxaca that have controlled the Al Pastor game in LA. Leo's Tacos, Leo's Tacos, there are like the, probably the pinnacle um, of like, uh, you know, we, we, we've all had them. They're on La Brea and, Olymp and, Olymp and La Brea and Venice, the first location, and now they're all over. But they're mijes, and uh, I I believe I've also had this, this sazon in, in the adobo that she's talking about, yes. and mijes, Oaxaqueños, uh, they like a lot more uh, high acid and vinegar and a lot more bolder flavor. So their trompo, their, uh, their al pastor is like really brightly cut, uh, taste. And it's exactly the piece, the, the piece of, of meat in the pastor and the perfect size of a pineapple. And they have a, a, a lot of locations in South Central. And the first location he was uh, in is uh, four blocks, the, this location, but it's exactly the flavor, uh, I don't know what is uh, the tortilla, but when you eat this taco, or when I eat this taco, I remember like Mexico City. Wow. And what's, uh, what's the salsa for El Pastor? What's your preferred salsa? Verde or Be roja? Roja. roja. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we've covered this. Uh, if, you, if you Google Al Pastor uh, and Oaxaca Indigenous Communities like Taco, you'll find a story written by, an indi by Odilia Romero, who's uh, an indigenous activist, um, because that's what we do at Lake Taco. We let people do their own stories and voices, not just keep it to ourselves. Okay, now Vic, what's your, uh, what's your favorite taco, aside from your taco? Uh, I like the taco on the show. So, uh, and he's, he's, he's one of my really good friends. So. Wait, who? Which one? Uh, I love tacos on the show. And this taquero, he's one of my good friends, so I do want to shout out Tacos Don Cuco. Oh, Don uh, Cuco. I like going there. Uh, he makes he makes you feel warm and welcome, you know, kind of like my stand. Um, and he does a salsa volador. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, I really like going there. Okay, so, so that's Tacos Don Cuco. Um, LA Tacos also covered this. Uh, they're in East LA on Federally and Whittier. They do Tijuana style tacos. They're one of the first, meaning uh, you know, handmade con tortilla thick smear of guacamole that's not watered down. And um, like I said, taco in a show because you go there and then the taquero, they're, cra they're like, you know, they're craftsmen, they're in a, they're in a, the entertainment, they throw the salsa in the air and they catch it. Um, so that, that, that's tacos on Cuco who, um, they're very, very delicious as well. They also, on weekend mornings, they make a birria de lengua too, a tongue birria, that's pretty amazing. Um, thank you, Vic. Um, Chewy? Um, I think for me, it kind of depends on the mood I'm in, but I'm gonna shout out two spots, La Carreta, Definitely just a little bit more um, traditional, if you will. And then if you ever can catch the homie, I know Javier likes them a lot too. Uh, the flautas from Los, Do Los Dorados are super good too. I think I, those are like, yeah. if you can catch that, that, those are some of the best ones for sure. Uh, yeah, also stories on Lake Taco, both of those. Uh, uh, Los Dorados, uh, interesting fun fact about him, he actually married into the King Taco family. 
And uh, I don't know if you all know, but there's a controversy with, 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 uh, with King Taco because they charge per salsa container there because it's so good and it's a, such a closely regarded secret, the salsa, but he also has that salsa and he just pours it on his stuff, on his flautas. He's in El Sereno, Los Dorados LA, makes really good ones. And then the other one was uh, La Carreta, yeah. which has a stand in Whittier. I'm sorry, they opened up their restaurant in Whittier and then they also uh, have their food truck on just north of 91 in North Long Beach on uh, 69th and what? I forgot what street, but yeah, just look it up. That was La Carreta. But cool, so Sinaloa style, Tijuana style, and uh, Oaxaqueño adobo al pastor style. We live in such a beautiful city of tacos, and just please appreciate it. Stop, you know, if you're hungry, if you smell it, if it smells good, stop and try it. it the chances are that it's gonna, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be incredible, and chances are that it's gonna be better than anything else in the rest of the country, because we have such a high bar here. Um, but thank you all so much for coming. Um, I think we're, uh, uh, do we have questions? Do we have time for questions, or should we just talk about it? Yeah, let's just take them outside. Okay, we'll take them outside. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I believe there's some findings. Some thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all so much for attending today's LMA program. If you would like to try some food samples, please head out to the courtyard. Uh, it'll be the first store as you exit. Um, you'll own, you'll be uh, someone will guide you out there. So just. Uh, and we just ask that you take one sample in the beginning so we can make sure that everybody gets a taste and uh, just wait around and I'm sure there'll be extras for afterwards. Uh, and also please come back on August 18th for a program with Strong Words, the favorite storytelling for grown-up show of Silver Lake and Atwater Village. Thank you everybody. All right, thank you so much. <laughs>